Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. Muscle loss or sarcopenia is one of the leading causes of increased mortality and low quality of life. In the United States alone, it ends up costing the healthcare industry $40.4 billion a year. Today, we are talking to Eric Kurtz, the inventor of a truly revolutionary new product that can reverse muscle aging and increase strength and endurance called Myotrol. Eric is a research-based scientist and inventor who holds over 20 different patents and has made significant discoveries and breakthroughs in the space of therapeutic, nutraceutical product creation and research for over 40 years. We had the opportunity to speak to Eric and get into detail about how Myotrol works and why it could possibly put an end to muscle wasting and the inevitable health problems that go with it. So get ready to live forever young. Eric, we're really, um, really honored that you could join us today. Uh, We've been talking to you for a while now about um, your new creation called Myotrol. But before we get started talking about that, would you mind giving us a little background about yourself and how you got into the world of life science and development of nutraceuticals? Uh, Sure. I've been involved in research and development and uh, product, uh, especially product, uh, proprietary product development in the nutraceutical and the pharmaceutical industry for over 30 years. And uh, as a result of that, I've developed a number of different um, innovative uh, proprietary patented technologies, both on the formulation side as well as the finished product side. And... uh, the last five or six years, my focus has been more on uh, discovery-based research related to new applications for natural ingredients and uh, also the formulations that would be needed to make those effective. Great, great. And how long have you been working on the development of Myotrol? Uh, Myotrol emerged over the last five or six years um, primarily related to the the unsolved issues or problems related to aging muscle in people because uh, uh, currently there really aren't any uh, really effective formulations for dealing with muscle loss that comes with aging. And so the, there appears to be a huge vacuum there for a product that could really be effective for that purpose. Great. And is that that was the motivation for you to start the development of Myotrol was to to ultimately find a solution for aging muscle? That's correct. With a particular emphasis on uh, screening different natural compounds for gene activity, what's called gene expression. Mm -hmm. That's great. And were there um, were there some breakthroughs in the field of life sciences that you um, learned from other people that helped you along the way with your research and development? Yes, over the years, uh, I've been following the the research areas that are involved in in aging and muscle loss itself. But one of the things that um, kept popping up is that while many companies were focused on anti-aging and attempting to increase the lifespan, of both humans and animals, very few people were looking at practical aspects of the quality of life that's associated with aging. And one of the big <clears throat> gorillas in the in the living room, so to speak, was the loss of functionality or mobility that comes with the loss of, of muscle strength and also the corresponding lack of, of energy associated with with um, movement and muscles in general. Mm -hmm. So so it's fair to say the purpose of the new development now that's called now called Myotrol is to help people restore their uh, level of muscle back to a younger age and in addition to help increase their energy. That's correct. Energy and endurance because uh, endurance or stamina is one of the key um, things that you'll hear people complaining about as they get older. I, I have a lack of energy. Well, what specifically is that lack of energy associated with? Well, basically, it's just getting off the couch 
at a certain point, it's getting motivated to be able to get out and actually engage in some kind of activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, I think that also if people want to go out and about, I mean, I, I remember uh, a few weeks ago, I went to visit my sister and her three grandchildren. And the first thing they want to all do is go out and play kickball. Right. And, and they want to run, they want to run around and they expect you to get up to bat and kick the ball and run to first base. And, you know, if you're going to play kickball for a whole hour and chase after the ball and run the bases with your grandkids, you, you definitely need a lot of uh, stamina and, and you have to have strength to be able to kick the ball. Otherwise, yeah. you're just sitting on the sideline, you know, cheering on some young people. Yeah, There's millions, millions of people every year go to the doctor complaining of low energy, CF, chronic fatigue syndrome, you know. Um, and a lot of that comes from not having the motivation to get up off the couch, the energy. And, and then, obviously, if you're not motivated to get off the couch – then the muscle wasting that you're already undergoing as you're aging is only compounding because as they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. Yeah. And it's, um, I guess there was some information, Eric, we were talking about earlier about how bad the problem really is. And apparently by the time someone gets to be 50 years old, they've lost between 15 and 30% of all of their muscle. And then it keeps going as you age, you keep losing muscle at about 10% every decade. And I'd also heard that when you turn to be around 75, there's another precipitous drop. And that by the time people get to be 80 years old, most of them have lost over half of their muscle. Yeah, that's correct. And in the last 30 years or 40 years, uh, scientific research has begun to unravel. Uh, what is going on in terms of tissue, aging tissue and muscle, uh, what contributes to, um, to a lack of muscle strength as we age, which genes are specifically involved in that process, and also which signaling pathways and enzyme systems are related, uh, because really you need a, a system-wide approach to deal with that problem. Mm -hmm. And so, Eric, how did you go about the the process like could you describe to us the process of how you particularly create a new product like this we know you're using research of your own and from the field of life science but how do you go from reading you know, research to actually having a finished product uh, yeah not to trivialize it but basically um conducting discovery-based research uh, these days can be from uh, in the laboratory using um, DNA arrays. Uh, for example, there's a DNA chip uh, that measures over 28,000 different human genes. So they're basically looking at the human genome and seeing which specific natural molecules can either upregulate, which means increase the activity, or downregulate, which means decrease the activity of different genes, because those genes are really the building blocks behind proteins and other enzyme systems, which are more complex systems, which are upstream. The, uh, the building blocks themselves are the genes. If you can activate them, then you can set in motion a whole cascade of activities that travel upstream and downstream back and forth through a network of energy channels which ultimately result in uh, effects that can be uh, felt in muscles themselves and in the energy levels that a person experiences. That's great. And so using that technology piece, plus your 30 years of experience in the field, you're able to draw things from here and there, science from here, knowledge you have from the past, put it all together in that creation that, and then, then how do you go about uh, testing it? Once you have what you think might work, wh what's the next step? Well, well, first we look for the gene activities. So we know which genes, um, the, the good news is that 
the last 30 or 40 years, science has discovered uh, which genes are key genes that are related to things like uh, declining muscle with aging. And some of these genes are contained in what's called the mitochondria, which is sort of the power source within our cells. And so the mitochondria is an extremely important uh, aspect here. But where we've gone beyond the mitral product has really gone beyond other so-called anti-aging supplements that might be, you know, primarily focused on stimulating NAD, what's called NAD in the mitochondria. Myotrol deals with the, enti the entire system of signaling pathways that start in the mitochondria with things like NAD and the genes that are associated with regenerating that power source in the cell. But it also deals systemically with all the other signaling pathways that can act to suppress that activity because one thing stimulating a particular gene system in an energy source like the mitochondria, it's another thing translating that into actual practical or tangible effects in muscle. That's the difference between the micro and the macro. Well, most of the longevity research has been focused on the mitochondria. And okay. there's a reason for that um, because aging itself and, and here we have a subset of aging, which is which is a decline in muscle strength. But overall, aging itself, the same principles are involved here that, that are related to muscle as are involved with the decline in vitality and aging itself. So while we're not focusing primarily on lengthening lifespan, the fact of the matter is that comes with the territory because you need to do the same types of things that would lengthen lifespan to revitalize, because you're revitalizing not just muscle, but other tissues in the body. Gotcha. Those aging those aging tissues, even organs like the heart and the liver and different things, uh, all of them decline as we get older. And mm -hmm. part of this process is to regenerate uh, the entire system. So it's really a system-wide approach. Yeah, you know, that makes sense because we were doing some research and some of the health issues that can come up from, you know, muscle loss is, you know, you lose your balance, you fall, uh, you could get osteoporosis, you could have issues with blood flow, respiratory issues, digestive issues, urination issues, vision issues. So like, what you're saying is exactly right. You know, as you lose muscle, the whole system starts to follow. So if you do something to increase muscle and to increase the way that it performs, it'll, it'll help the whole system as, as a whole. So it's kind of looking at right. it as taking one focus and saying this can work for the rest of the body. So that's, that's interesting because, you know, you think to yourself, like I have an 85 year old aunt who I noticeably can see like within the last five to six years she has gone from being a healthy weight to like the last time i saw her she weighed like 98 almost 100 and maybe 102 pounds at the most so it's it's crazy you can actually that that drop off is so pronounced especially as you age in in the muscle uh wasting it's just i've seen it so i, I can relate to that part of it anyway yeah there are two things that i want to emphasize that happen or where research over the last 30 years focused on that relate to both aging in general and muscle loss in particular. The two things that have been found to primarily lengthen lifespan are exercise and uh, fasting, right? Mm -hmm. now, everybody got interested in fasting a number of years ago because it's associated with the stimulation of a particular gene. And uh, exercise had been found for many years now to be beneficial in terms of lengthening both animal and human lifespan. So something is going on with those two things that stimulate certain genes and certain enzymes in the body that it's very beneficial. Mm. So we started looking at what those gene sets were that are activated by both fasting and exercise because they're different, they're different systems, but they are interrelated. And we found that we could mimic or stimulate the same types of processes that go on with either fasting or exercise without having to do 
either one of those things. Mo- most people don't have the discipline to <laughs> to fast or to get out and exercise right now. I'm not saying that people should stop watching their diet and not get out and exercise because it will only be better if they complement uh, exercise and uh, dietary uh, moderation with myotrol, then it's the best of all worlds. It only gets better. Absolutely. That's great. So, um, Eric, we encourage people to exercise all the time and um, have podcasts about it and how to, how to modify their habits and not have a sedentary lifestyle. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what is going on with Myotrol that helps people feel motivated to exercise? That's a good question uh, because part of it's difficult to really uh, explain all of the different aspects that the Myotrol product deals with. We're just touching on a, a few of them today, but uh, uh, there's much deeper levels of which can be gone on, on, on a number of different key systems. But one of those is uh, called brain drive neurotrophic factor. It's a complicated sounding name, but and it's abbreviated as BDNF. But basically, BDNF is going to be the uh, the gene or the system that's associated with the hand to eye coordination, um, the the mobility of the body. The brain has to send a signal to other parts of the body to initiate movement. If you think about it, it's a very practical thing. But first, you have to have the thought that you're going to get up from the couch or the chair or get out of bed. That First comes the thought. The thought sends a signal to the muscles that initiate the movement. Part of the problem that happens as people age is that the transmission of the information or the connection between the thinking process or the brain and the movement of the body or the motility, the motility starts being affected. So the signals are not traveling as well as they used to. And part of what Myotrol attempts to address is uh, stimulate the activity of BDNF Mm. uh, in the body, in the brain, which helps with the motility issue. Now, that's just one of a number of different systems that are activated by a myotrol. But it's an important one because obviously the motivation or the ability to get out and do something, to get out and exercise, uh, is extremely important. As we were saying before, we're not suggesting that myotrol is going to take the place of either exercise or dietary restriction. But what we are saying is the myotrol will enhance uh, all those other activities that, that come with the territory. That That's an important point. I agree. Yeah. And so I also think it's important to note that, yes, myotrol is actually working on genetic signaling. Um, and and from from what I understand about the product, you would want to to actually take it with something that provides the nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and good fats that the body needs in order to rebuild and repair. Because as you become more active, you get more energetic and you start to develop more muscles through these genetic signals, you're going to need the building blocks to create those. And as, as uh, Myotrol can uh, sound the alarm, if you will, by creating these signals, you would want great nutrition to be able to make it even make it work even better along hand in hand with the exercise, I would think, correct? That's correct. Because uh, where myotrol is different from uh, other current supplements like vitamins, minerals, proteins, amino acids, and even anabolic steroids like testosterone injections and things like that is not dealing with um with those those dietary sources of uh, potential energy, like taking a lot of protein powder and things like that, it's only going to go so far. If you don't also activate or deal with the declining activity of the different gene pools or the mm-hmm. gene, gene groups of genes in the mitochondria and other parts of the body, which you know, it goes all the way from the power source all all the way out through the network and eventually finds its way to the muscle that also inter- interacts with the brain. Um, that's what makes myotrol very unique is that you might be taking protein powders, 
and all these other uh, nutritional products. And that's great. You need those things. But you need a, a something else that's a system-wide tuning mechanism that changes other aspects of the body that are key building blocks to enable those supplements to really work to their maximum effect. Mm. Because you can take a bunch of protein powder and then hope that you're going to get out and exercise and run and everything. But most people over 60 or 70 will notice that they don't get as much energy from things like protein supplements that they used to. And there's a reason for that because of the declining uh, activity within the cells and the genes in the cells and the building blocks. Right. I was going to say it's because that activity is slowed down it, it, internally, not with not with the creation of the muscle, but with the sign, with the, like, hey, are we supposed to be building muscle? It's like they're lost. Should we, you know, so you got to wake that signal up, the genetic signal is, is what I'm understanding from speaking with you. Yeah, there's signaling pathways that could be thought of as, uh, you know, roads. And these roads or these freeways start over time, if they're not repaired on a you know regular basis, start falling apart. There's potholes and different things. And there's also things like uh, in the body, like traffic cars, you know, that regulate the flow of energy. Mm. There's also chaperones. There's molecules that chaperone some of these beneficial substances like proteins and so on. So if you don't have the chaperones, the traffic cops, the repaired potholes, which are the signaling pathways, and the energy source itself, which is the source of the of the entire energy system in the mitochondria, then no matter how much protein or vitamins and things that you take, it's going to be minimally effective. Right. And you were talking about protein powders. So a lot of people are familiar with how to take powders. We we have a great powdered supplements as well. How how is myotrol used? How is how do you actually take the supplement? Well, along with your general uh, products that you're taking, like protein supplements, uh, you would take the myotrol on a daily basis. For example, in the morning, uh, prior to or a few hours before um, consuming the other supplements, you could also take it with at the simultaneously. It's not going to matter that much, but what the mitral is going to do is open up the systems and the signaling pathways within the body to make those supplements that much more effective. Awesome. That's, That's what we like. We like that. <laughs> so, Eric, from the um, short amount of time that people have been using mitral, what have you seen are the benefits that people are getting? Well, generally speaking, people are... Um, it, they're finding it easier to be much more active. Uh, they're finding their stamina and endurance increasing, and they're finding their motivation and their mobility to be much better. One of the things that people often forget about, and which is a critical part of why aging muscle is, is such a huge economic problem, uh, for example, uh, loss of muscle strength in aging population is estimated to cost the medical industry over $18 billion a year. It's a massive um, health cost. Mm. And that's another reason why the, um, conducting research uh, in this area was so important, because it's a huge unmet medical need, and also it represents a huge cost to our medical system. So, for example, just uh, the issue of a loss of mobility or motility uh, which you can translate that also into uh, loss of balance. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the big reasons why people fall uh, and break a bone and have a serious health complication that was associated or originated with aging muscle is falling down as a direct result of a loss of control over the muscles, loss of the strength. Um, if you lift your leg to climb the stairs, and you don't place your leg in the right place because you didn't lift it high enough, you're going to fall. And so it's it's really important to consider how, uh, what a huge problem, balance and maintaining balance. And that's directly related to muscle integrity and muscle mm -hmm. signaling. Yeah, and people's bones actually get weaker as their muscles get weaker. So now if they do fall, there's a much higher chance of 
having a fracture a broken exactly mm-hmm. that's insane that's that's crazy when you think about it so as the muscles get weaker the bones get weaker and that's that's because there's not as much tension and there's not as much uh not as much pulling on the bone so it's not being used as much is it another case of if you don't use it you lose it with the with the same same type of thing with the bones partially yeah but also there's some nutritional aspects to that but yes bone uh bone strength and density and hardness can uh is ultimately directly related to pressure to putting pressure on the bone uh that helps to maintain the integrity there are obviously other factors that go into the matrix of bone itself, mm. um, but but the movement or the lack of movement or a sedentary lifestyle is one of the primary contributors to uh, osteoporosis and bone loss. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> so if you have a loss of muscle, you don't feel like moving around that much. You get more and more sedentary. Your bones get more brittle. And then you got to stand up and start moving and you're weak and you lose balance and you fall and you break Mm -hmm. your, break your hip. Yeah. Horrible. (laughs) I often tell people also the analogy of uh, space flight, an astronaut uh, who is, you know, if we ever do go to Mars, uh, they're going to need to deal with muscle loss that comes with a lack of of gravitation. So one key issue would be mitral would be the perfect supplement for somebody going to Mars who wants to prevent the loss of both muscle loss and bone bone strength loss that will come with a lack of gravitation. Hmm. That's I didn't amazing. think about that, but that makes sense because they talk about people <clears throat> losing muscle strength and they, they get, I believe it, I think they get shorter because there's no you know there's nothing to pull on the muscles so everything's light and there you're not really using them i mean you're moving them but when you like if you're not you're not using it you lose it and then you, you your gene i could imagine if if you're not needing to create new muscle cuz everything's lighter then your genes might say well we better not make more muscle right and so by taking something like myotrol that keeps that active pathway that genetic pathway signaling pathway open even in an environment where there's no gravity, it will tell you to keep making muscle, right? Exactly. That's great. That's, hey, that's Raleigh, great. So, <laughs> Raleigh, <laughs> uh, Raleigh, you have um, a bottle to show us what the oh, yes, of course. going to look like. Yes, so and, I'm sorry. Uh, Here you go. Up. This yep. is what we're talking so, about. So, Eric, we understand they're going to be in gel caps. That's correct. And you take and over it, a period of time... Uh, people will notice that as it begins to shift the gene activity and the core uh, principles that are involved in muscle loss and and energetics over a period of a couple of weeks, they'll begin to notice more and more dramatic changes that occur. I mean, it's not something that will occur overnight in 24 hours, but over time, it's sort of, I tell people, the body is the aging body is sort of like a giant cruise ship, like a Viking cruise ship. It takes a long time to turn that ship. You know, if it's heading towards an iceberg, the iceberg might be, you know, 20 miles out detected by the radar, but the ship needs to start turning a long time before it gets close to that iceberg. The body is sort of, the aging body is is sort of like that giant Viking cruise ship. It takes a while to start turning it turning it back in the direction of of youthful activity or the way that those genes and those signaling pathways function when a person was in their teens or their early 20s. Hmm. That's that's really great, Eric. But But what you're saying is that it might take a while to turn, but it's possible. Exactly. That's the key. (laughs) Well, Eric, listen, we wanted to say thank you taking time out of your day to talk with us. Congratulations on the creation of Myotrol. We're all looking forward to taking it coming up soon here. And um, we wanted to um, say thank you also to everyone who is watching and listening to Live Forever Young Radio. And Eric, we look forward to bringing you back on the show another time soon. Yeah, before we sign off, I was going to say he he mentioned there's a lot more intricate things earlier in the recording. So I'm hoping that you'll come on again and we can go into a little bit more of these because it's quite intriguing. 
and our and our I know our audience loves it, so I hope everybody enjoyed it. I want to say thanks again, Eric. I appreciate you being here, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. For more podcasts or to check out our Boomer products, check us out at boomerboost.com. Thanks for listening.